5 medications that doctors never take but you take without knowing. Today we're going to talk about medications that may be prescribed but are usually avoided by doctors for long-term use. I'll present 5 medications that, in my opinion, should be avoided for prolonged periods. Taking medication for an extended time generally indicates a chronic issue and addressing only the symptoms without treating the underlying cause may not be the best approach. While temporary symptom relief is important for reducing stress and improving quality of life, prolonged medication use without addressing the root problem can be concerning. That's why I'd like to discuss five types of medications that doctors avoid taking for long periods. Let's get started. 1. Painkillers Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs First on the list are painkillers known as NSAIDs. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which are the most widely used medications globally. Examples include loxanin, loxaprofen, voltaren, diclofenac, and ibuprofen, with some available over-the-counter. However, using these drugs is associated with several risks, such as heart complications. Data from large studies show that prolonged use of these drugs may increase the risk of heart failure by about 20%. The higher the dose and duration of use, the greater the risk. Additionally, many of these medications cause gastrointestinal damage, including ulcers and bleeding in the digestive tract. In more severe cases, stomach or intestinal perforations can occur. Most cases of bleeding ulcers are NSAID use. Another problem with prolonged use is the impact on the kidneys, as these medications can reduce kidney function, leading to issues like fluid retention and swelling. While not all users experience visible swelling, an estimated 5% of people show noticeable signs of swelling. Therefore, it's important to limit the use of these drugs and try to address the root cause of pain, such as knee or back issues, rather than relying on painkillers long term. Apart from cardiac, gastrointestinal, and renal risks, prolonged NSAID use can be associated with other side effects like dizziness, headaches, and allergies. Some people may develop severe allergic reactions to these drugs, with symptoms like rashes, difficulty breathing, and facial swelling. It's important to note that while NSAIDs can be effective in relieving pain and inflammation, they do not address the underlying cause of the problem. Seeking medical advice to properly identify and treat the source of pain is crucial. Instead of relying solely on medications to manage symptoms, safer and more natural alternatives for pain relief include relaxation techniques, low-impact exercises, physical therapy, and acupuncture. Lifestyle changes like maintaining proper posture, engaging in regular physical activities, and keeping a healthy weight can also help prevent and relieve chronic pain. In cases of acute pain or when NSAIDs are necessary, it's essential to follow medical advice and the packaging instructions, adhering to the recommended doses and treatment duration. Indiscriminate and prolonged use of these drugs can pose serious health risks, so it's crucial to be aware of the potential side effects and seek safer alternatives whenever possible. Twice statins, cholesterol reducing medications. The second medication I would avoid long-term is statins, used to lower cholesterol levels. Statins are often prescribed to reduce the risk of heart disease. Discovered by Japanese scientist Dr. Akira Endo, statins are considered one of the greatest discoveries in medicine. They can reduce the risk of heart disease by 30% to 40%, according to some studies. However, it's important to understand how these data are interpreted. In a large study on statins, about 3% of participants who did not take the medication had heart attacks, while that number dropped to 2% among those who took statins. 
This represents a relative reduction of 30%, but in absolute terms, it's only a 1% reduction. This means that to prevent a heart attack in one person, it's many others must take the drug without direct benefits. Additionally, statins can cause side effects such as muscle damage, rhabdomyolysis, and mitochondrial dysfunction, as well as increasing the risk of hemorrhagic stroke. While it's important for people who have already had a heart attack to continue taking statins, for those with only high cholesterol, lifestyle changes can be a healthier and more effective alternative. Personally, I would avoid long-term statin use if high cholesterol were the only problem, without other cardiac complications. Another potential side effect of statins is the increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Studies suggest that prolonged use of statins can elevate the risk of developing diabetes by up to 50%. This risk is particularly concerning because diabetes is a significant risk factor for heart disease and other health complications. Moreover, statins can affect cognitive function in some people. Some users report memory problems, confusion, and difficulty concentrating during prolonged use of these medications. While these side effects are generally reversible after stopping the treatment, they can be bothersome and impact the quality of life. It's important to note that statins may be necessary and beneficial for people at high risk of heart disease, especially those with a history of heart attacks or other serious cardiovascular problems. However, for individuals with high cholesterol as the only risk factor, it's crucial to consider alternative approaches before resorting to long-term statin use. Lifestyle changes such as adopting a healthy diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and healthy fats, along with regular exercise, can be effective measures to reduce cholesterol and improve heart health. Moreover, stress management Maintaining a healthy weight and avoiding tobacco are important factors in preventing heart disease. Before statin use, it's essential to consult a doctor to evaluate the individual risks and benefits. Each person has unique health needs and conditions, and a healthcare professional can guide the best approach to manage cholesterol and reduce the risk of heart disease. 3. Sleeping Medications Zalpedum, hypnotics. The third medication I would avoid long term is sleeping pills like Zalpedum, commercially known as Stilnox or Ambien. These medications are often prescribed to treat insomnia and are known for their fast action and short duration of effect. However, prolonged use of Zalpedum is associated with several risks, such as falls, dizziness, daytime drowsiness and even abnormal behaviors, like nonsensical conversations or forgetting events. In elderly patients, the risk of falls increases significantly, and prolonged use can lead to dependence. Additionally, when the drug is abruptly stopped, patients may experience rebound insomnia or withdrawal symptoms. Many people develop an exaggerated fear of not being able to sleep, which increases anxiety and worsens insomnia. Instead of relying on sleeping pills, it is more effective to adopt behavioral changes and sleep hygiene practices. This includes sleeping only when feeling sleepy, avoiding the use of electronic devices in bed, and maintaining a consistent wake-up time, even after a poor night's sleep. Meditation, reading, and other relaxing activities before bed can also help. In addition to the risks mentioned, the prolonged use of sleeping pills can affect sleep quality. While these drugs may help induce sleep, they can alter the natural sleep architecture, reducing time spent in deeper, restorative stages, such as REM sleep. This can lead to the feeling of unrefreshing sleep, even after a full night's rest. Another problem with the long-term use of sleeping medications is the risk of drug interactions. Many of these medications are metabolized by the liver and may interact with other drugs, 
alcohol, and even certain foods. These interactions can increase side effects and the risks associated with using these medications. It is important to emphasize that insomnia can be a symptom of underlying mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. In these cases, treating the underlying condition may be more effective than relying on long-term sleeping medications. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy CBT, is a non-pharmacological approach that effectively treats insomnia, helping patients identify and modify thoughts and behaviors that contribute to sleep problems. Other strategies to improve sleep quality include creating a comfortable and quiet environment, practicing regular physical activity, avoiding intense exercises close to bedtime, limiting caffeine and alcohol consumption, especially at night, and managing stress through relaxation techniques like deep breathing and yoga. In cases of chronic or severe insomnia, it is crucial to seek medical guidance to assess the underlying causes and determine the best course of treatment. Although sleeping pills may be necessary in some cases, it is important to weigh the risks and benefits of long-term use and explore safer and more sustainable alternatives whenever possible. Diabetes Medications SGLT2 Inhibitors The fourth type of medication I would avoid long-term is SGLT2 inhibitors, used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. These medications block glucose reabsorption by the kidneys, causing excess glucose to be eliminated through urine. This helps to lower blood glucose levels, but it also increases the risk of urinary and genital infections, especially in women. Furthermore, the excessive loss of glucose can lead to weakness, fatigue, and dehydration. While these drugs may benefit patients with diabetes and heart or kidney disease, it is important to try to control diabetes through diet and exercise and exercise. Before resorting to prolonged use of medications, another potentially serious side effect of SGLT2 inhibitors is the increased risk of diabetic ketoacidosis a condition that occurs when the body produces high levels of ketones due to a lack of insulin. Although more common in type 1 diabetes patients, diabetic ketoacidosis can also occur in type 2 diabetes patients who use SGLT2 inhibitors. Symptoms include nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, confusion, and shortness of breath. If left untreated, Diabetic ketoacidosis can lead to coma or even death. Additionally, SGLT2 inhibitors can increase the risk of amputations of toes or legs, especially in patients with peripheral artery disease or diabetic neuropathy. It is crucial for patients using these drugs to carefully monitor their feet and legs and immediately report any wounds, ulcers, or infections to their doctor. It is important to emphasize that for many patients with type 2 diabetes, lifestyle changes such as adopting a healthy diet, exercising regularly, and maintaining a healthy weight may be enough to control blood glucose levels. Even modest weight loss can significantly improve insulin sensitivity and reduce the need for medications. When lifestyle changes are not enough to control diabetes, other drugs, such as metformin, may be considered before resorting to SGLT2 inhibitors. Metformin is generally the first-line drug for treating type 2 diabetes. Because it is effective, safe, and well-tolerated by most patients. If the use of SGLT2 inhibitors is necessary, it is crucial for patients to be closely monitored for any side effects or complications. Patients should be advised to drink enough fluids to avoid dehydration and immediately report any symptoms of urinary or genital infections, diabetic ketoacidosis, or foot and leg problems to their doctor. PM, proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, acid reducers. The fifth and final medication I would avoid long-term is proton pump inhibitors, PPIs. 
such as omeprazole, which are commonly prescribed to treat acid reflux and stomach ulcers. These drugs reduce the production of stomach acid, which can relieve reflux symptoms and promote ulcer healing. However, prolonged use of PPIs is associated with several risks, including vitamin B12 deficiency, poor absorption of magnesium, calcium, and iron, increased risk of pneumonia, osteoporosis, and even stomach cancer. Additionally, these drugs can weaken the stomach's natural defenses, allowing bacteria and other pathogens to enter the digestive tract. Interestingly, studies show that regularly drinking water can provide temporary relief from acid reflux symptoms similar to using medications. Therefore, instead PPIs long-term, it is better to address the underlying cause of reflux, such as being overweight or having unhealthy eating habits. For many people, lifestyle changes such as losing weight and improving diet can be as effective as medications in controlling acid reflux. Another problem with the long-term use of PPIs is the risk of drug interactions. These medications can interfere with the absorption and effectiveness of other drugs, such as anticoagulants, antidepressants, and osteoporosis treatments. This can lead to serious and potentially fatal complications, especially in elderly patients or those with multiple health conditions. Moreover, studies suggest that prolonged use of PPIs can increase the risk of Clostridium difficile infection, a bacterium that causes severe and potentially fatal diarrhea. This occurs because PPIs alter the natural balance of bacteria in the digestive tract, creating a more favorable environment for the growth of harmful bacteria. It is important to note that while PPIs may be necessary to treat certain conditions such as stomach ulcers or erosive esophagitis, they should not be used indefinitely without medical supervision. If acid reflux symptoms persist despite lifestyle changes, other treatments such as H2 receptor antagonists, e.g. famotidine or antacids, may be considered before resorting to PPIs. If the use of PPIs is necessary, it is crucial for patients to be closely monitored, and the dose and duration of treatment should be minimized. Patients should be advised not to abruptly discontinue PPIs, as this can cause a rebound effect of increased stomach acid production, worsening reflux symptoms. In summary, it is important to address the underlying causes of health problems, rather than simply masking the symptoms with long-term medications. While medications may be necessary in some cases, such as for people who have had a heart attack or are at risk of kidney failure, it is always better to try to change lifestyle habits to improve health. I hope this discussion has been helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please like and follow the channel for more content like this.